Welcome to our digital service for Sunday, January 29th. And today's service is a little different because uh, both on our digital and on our live, we're gathering together for, for one common option rather than having our normal traditional and digital options. So please join us in song as we begin uh, with all God's people said, amen. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance and striving for peace that in our words and deeds, the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Micah, the sixth chapter. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you, mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with his people, and God will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you, and what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, and that, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? 
He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, who t- nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath, even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Paul writes, The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. And not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are. So that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord.
Lord God, may we see a world where your presence makes your words true. May we see a world where your kingdom comes and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. May we be open to the ways in which you move, not only in our world, but in our lives. And as we hear these words this day, may your words open up our eyes to see where you lead us and to live the life you call us to. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, you know, one of the things I try to do each week is pull back the curtain in a different way. And, and what I mean by that is we live in a world where, where we often, I would say normally and, you know, frankly, most of our lives, we assume that God is distant. We assume that God is far away from us and that the reality is that we've got to work out our own way, our own salvation, our own way through life. And, and, even, and even Christianity, even faith, has taken on that, that tone for a lot of people over, well, certainly over most of our lives. And again, this, this, this vision of a world that is separate from God. And so one of the things that... I feel like my calling is and my job is when I when I come before you is to try to is to try to find a way to point to the reality that our faith says something very different. And maybe they are crazy words. Maybe they are maybe they are like the world says, you know. Maybe it's just a delusion. I don't believe that. And I often find that the way in which the world shapes us is not a, a, a way that is a way that brings peace or joy or life or love. And so let's if you'll let me, let's imagine the world where God actually is present. Let's imagine the world as God created it to be. Let's imagine us as people who God created us to be. A, a world of, of holy spaces, of holy people, of holy things. A world where God's presence comes, where God's kingdom dwells among us. You know, that, but that, that struggle with that is so ingrained in us. You know, as I was thinking about uh, the Sermon on the Mount this week, I, a song came to mind. It's a song from the early 90s uh, by a group called Sawyer Brown's country group from that time period. And, and it quotes the Sermon on the Mount, but it quotes it in a way to where it just basically says, you know, but this can't be true. And so the song goes like this. And the weak shall inherit the earth, and the bank shall repossess it. This job don't pay half what it's worth. But it's a thankful man that gets it at the cafe down on the corner with a lost look on his face. There ain't no fields to plow. He's wishing for one now. 
He's just a little out of place. Now the song, and again, I, wanna, I got into this type of music when I went to A&M uh, years ago because honestly that was the music that played at the dance halls and that's where you met people. And I've been a city boy for most of my life. You know, farming was something that happened out there in the countryside, and I got to be a beneficiary of it when we went to the grocery store, and there was the food that we just picked out. And, and I know, you know, even today, we complain about the price of eggs or the price of milk or the price of flour, or, and these things go around and around, but it wasn't until several years later, about a decade later after this song, where I actually was doing my internship in a farming community in uh, what, was dairy what is dairy country up in Wisconsin, that I began to understand what the song itself was about and the disillusionment with the way in which life had changed for so many people who had grown up with family farms as those things were becoming a way of life that was dying out. That farms were becoming bigger and bigger and these uh, Corporate farms were basically pricing out the family farm. And it was this, this sense to where, you know, we've tried to do everything the way that we've done it for generation after generation after generation. We've been the people who have, have tried to be faithful, have tried to do things this way. And again, the meek shall inherit the earth and the bank shall repossess it. I know that the, the things that say that the Beatitudes are not true are real and they are powerful. I know that what I preach sometimes sounds like foolishness. And again, they don't line up the lectionary this way, but it's just one of those things where you have everything kind of lining up this week to where you have the message of Paul. You know, we, we talk about the message of the cross, which is foolishness. To those who don't get it, to those who don't accept it, you know, to talk about a man who was crucified being the Lord, being Messiah, being the one who we've been waiting for, to most of the world, unless you are coming from the perspective of faith, is foolishness. But for us, it's the center. It's the power of God. It is that which makes sense of everything else. This is where God's love meets us. You know, we have Micah, and this is one of those uh, 6, 8 in Micah, chapter 6, verse 8 in Micah, is one of those passages a lot of people kind of quote back to and say, you know, here's that, 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 that kernel, that, that thing that makes sense for me. You know, how then am I to live? You know, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Okay. If that's what God expects of me, then I can do that. You know, I can try to live that life. But I think even for Micah, that, you know, it doesn't ask us to go that far. You know, you can, you can say, okay, God can be distant and I can still live this way. But that's not Micah's perspective at all. Micah's perspective is that God is close. And the reason that he's calling the people back to this way of life is because they've strayed from it and, and God sees and God knows and that God wants to dwell among God's people. That's what God wants more than anything else. And, and it's not going to take sacrifice. It's not going to take building great buildings or saying long prayers. It's about a life that is transformed about a community that lives the way which God wants them to live. You know, the only way in which the, the Beatitudes, these blessed words, and again, that's where Beatitude comes from. It's, it's Latin for blessed. But, you know, blessed are those. Blessed are they. You know, the poor in spirit, the meek, the mourning ones, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 
peacemakers and pure in heart and merciful and those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. The only world in which they are blessed for being those things is the world in which God calls us to believe in. In the community in which God forms to be a part of these things. And it takes Christ being present for that to happen. You know, the reason the Sermon on the Mount works is because the speaker is the God who is with us. The kingdom of heaven that he talks about is the kingdom that he brings. You know, Matthew wants us to get to this point really, really fast. This is kind of, for Matthew, these these places where Jesus is teaching us, that's what's the center of the gospel. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, is to learn what it is that he has to say, to imagine this world that he has to speak us into, you know, to try to live out this world where this is what it means to be blessed or happy, you know, to not let the way in which the world shapes things to determine that which is important to us. Because again, the world closes in those those places where God is present and says, you know, but when it really comes down to it, what matters is, is you. What matters is your experience right here, right now. Whatever is going to make you feel good in this moment, that's what happiness is. And the Sermon on the Mount says no. Happiness belongs not to, the, not to the strong, but to those who are meek. You know, and I think so often we mistake cruelty for strength rather than mercy. You know, I think... There's so many times in this world where we see those who go out and they take for themselves that which is theirs and and they seize it, sometimes violently. And yet, the Sermon on the Mount says, happy, blessed are those who are peacemakers. We're taught to hunger and thirst for security, for wealth, for position for all these different things. But what would the world be like if we hungered and thirst for righteousness, which is God's ways? And these are, again, outside of the place of of Christ in our midst. These are crazy words. Because I don't know of any other place where it talks about, well, happy are you when people revile you and they persecute you and they utter all kinds of evil against you. I mean, you can find it some in leadership literature where they're talking about if you're going to lead, you're going to incur resistance. But but this is something much deeper than that, I think. That going and living into this vision that Jesus is putting before us It's hard because the world tells us time and time again, well, this is foolishness. This is not our way, and that's right, it's not. This is not the wisdom of the world. This is God's wisdom. This is God's way. And I know that it feels like sometimes that the the job I do of trying to proclaim this is an uphill uphill battle, but I think the same was true of Jesus' time as well. There were a lot of people in Jesus' time that would have said, well, we view ourselves as the meek who are working the earth, and, you know, it seems like every year more and more gets taken away from us. And the only way way in which we've seen the world work out is a world where might seems to make right. Right. And there is 
in Christ another way. Where those who have nothing to trust in other than God will come and see the kingdom of God. Where those who mourn will be comforted. Where the meek will inherit the earth and no bank will repossess it. Where those who hunger and thirst not for all the things of this world but for righteousness will find that they've inherited far more than those who who strove after wealth or power or money or position or status or all the other things that we're told to, to keep running that rat race for. Where we can learn how to be merciful and receive mercy, where we can be pure in heart because we want to see God. And we believe that God's not that far away, that God is indeed among us. Or we can be peacemakers who, who instead of being those who go out and lead the world into more and more conflict. You know, one of the things that really bothers me about our society right now is if you watch, if you watch so much, whether it's our politics or our news or, or, um, or the things that we lift up in, in our media, often it is combative. You know, it's two people arguing with each other and yelling at each other and trying to yell over each other. I don't believe that's the way. And yes, we may be persecuted for righteousness sake. And I'm not saying that we are a persecuted church, but I do think that there are going to be times where making these choices are going to make you stand out in the midst of the world, in the, in the midst of your job, in the midst of, of your family sometimes, because you're making choices differently. And yet, with Christ's presence, I do believe this is the way. This is what it's about. This is what Matthew wants us to hear and see and know. This is the way of Christ. And we, as those who have been called from our own, our own work, our own fishnets, we who are children of the living God, this is the way that we are called to follow. The good news is we're not alone in it. Because God is not distant from us. God is present in our midst, in our lives. And may God continue to open our eyes to the ways in which God is at work, bringing God's kingdom into our midst. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we come together and we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for your world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Ethan, Evan, Luke, Michael, Ryan, Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. 
We lift up before you Addison, Aubrey, Avery, Betsy, Billy, Bob, Brenda, Campbell, Carlene, Cohen, Dennis, Donna, Donnie, Eliza, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Judy, Jane, Karen, Lori, Linda, Maddie, Maureen, Melissa, Mike, Patrick, Roger, Sandy, Tom, and Wayne, and the friends and family of Joyce Anderson and Chris Linsbart, as well as those we lift up in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today Community of Hope Lutheran Church in Fort Worth, Trinity Lutheran Church in Pottville, and Texas Impact in Austin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, in trust and in hope, we commend you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May the peace of God be with you as you gather together with friends and family in your homes. So this is also the part of the service where we would collect our offering. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our, our digital community as you're watching this. And thank you for the ways in which you participate in, in your life of faith in your own home and hopefully in your life of faith in your community. Um, if you would like to contribute to Rejoice, you can always uh, send a check to us at our address at 12,000 Independence Parkway, Frisco, Texas, 75035. You can, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there should be a link right below it to, uh, to Tithely, which is, is the electronic service we use for our electronic giving. Uh, you can either download the Tithely app or go to our website, uh, and there's a Give Now button there as well. Um, but again, you make uh, the, the contributions of, of both our physical congregation and our digital congregation make this ministry possible. So I just want to thank you for the ways in which you allow me to do what I do and for this congregation to do the ministry that we do. Now at this point, we're going to prepare for communion. And communion is a, a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's one of the things that we, we hold as, as, as a central piece because it's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. And so if you want to participate with us, I know that we're watching this digitally and we're separated by distance, but we trust that Christ can be present with both in, in this place and in your home as we celebrate. And so if you want to gather together bread and either grape juice or wine, uh, you're welcome to do so at this point. We gather together, and we remember how in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, how he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. May Christ be present with you as you celebrate in your home with family and friends. Yeah. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life. Praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.